we take this opportunity to report to the people of South Africa that the targets we set ourselves in preparations for the 2024 general elections are all fully met. When we established our election machinery in August 2023, we set ourselves the target of establishing branch election task forces in all of South Africa's 4,368 wards. We are happy to report that as of the 2nd of January 2024, all the 4,368 wards have functional BETFs, which makes it 67,020 members of BTFs who are leading election machinery at what level. When we established the election machinery in August 2023, we set ourselves a target of establishing voting district election task forces in all of South Africa's 23,296 voting districts. We are happy to report that the EFF has functional and verified voting districts election task forces in all the 23,296 voting districts. We can boldly confirm that as of the 2nd of January 2024, the EFF has verified and audited 481,649 ground forces who are volunteers in all the voting districts. What this means is that the Economic Freedom Fighters has a total of 548 and 669 volunteers and ground forces who will be campaigning for the EFF for the purpose of elections victory in 2024. We call on the young people of South Africa and all the remaining members of the EFF to join in as volunteers and organizers for elections victory in 2024. A clarion call is that every young person must be a volunteer and organizer for election victory in 2024. Young people are called upon to join the Battalion of Economic Freedom Fighters, volunteers, and organizers. The 2024 elections will be a turning point in the history of South Africa's politics, and we as the EFF will be at the center of that monumental change. We know that the right-wing forces which are funded and coordinated by the white capitalist establishment and foreign countries are hard at work to prevent the EFF from ascending to political power in 2024. We want to assure the people of South Africa, the African continent and the progressive world that the EFF will ascend to government in South Africa after the national and provincial elections. Despite the many commitments and lies told by the sitting government, load shedding is still a reality and this is what it does. Students just wrote their metric in the dark only to be allowed to spend the rest of December with electricity. There are factories that have closed down, leaving hundreds without jobs. Companies are incurring additional costs in security and backup electricity because of load shedding. The healthcare system is crippled with hospitals struggling to maintain critical life-saving equipment in an operational state during power outages. It is true that load shedding is killing people. Small businesses, the backbone of our economy, are suffocating under the pressure of interrupted operations, leading to losses, losses in revenue and potential closures. Students at institutions of higher learning are suffering because of inconsistent power supply. Lastly, the tourism sector, which is a vital, which is vital for our nations income and global reputation is tarnished as visitors face the grim reality of a country unable to provide basic utility services. These are the damages of load shedding that they are trying to cover with lies. The country is facing an unemployment crisis that is now a matter of national security. As people return to their places of work after holidays, there are more than 11.7 11 million people who are willing, able, and ready to make a living for themselves, but are excluded from the economy. These are unemployed, dejected, and forgotten people who should be 
contributing meaningfully to the economy to feed their families. What is even more scary is that we have more than 70% of people between the age of 15 and 34 years of age who cannot find employment being forced into a life of crime and illegal substance abuse. These are young people condemned to a hell of unemployment as Sir Ramaphosa made it clear that it is not the intention or obligation of the ANC government to create jobs. Our people continue to live in spaceless townships and informal settlements in squalor without clean water and flushing toilets. When we revived the cry for land, for land to build houses, build schools, churches, factories, and farms, this cry was once more hijacked. We tabled a motion for Parliament to start a process to amend Section 25 of the Constitution to allow for expropriation of land without compensation into the custody of the state. That process was hijacked. Despite hundreds of submissions that made a concrete call for expropriation of all land without compensation, whites continue to own 72% of total farms and agricultural land, while blacks, Africans, only own 4% of the land. This is the reason why they don't want to amend the Constitution. The South African police services has completely collapsed, leaving our people on their own. There is nothing between them and criminals. In the last calendar year, more than 27,494 people were murdered. This figure increased by more than 2,000 murders compared to the previous year. Already in the first and the second quarter of the current year, more than 13,000 people have already been murdered. These numbers are higher than those in some declared civil war zones. The number of sexual offenses, number of attempted murder, the number of assaults, common assaults, robbery, and contact crimes have gone up in the last quarter. In the last quarterly report, which covers the period of July and September 2023, there were 6,945 murders. There were 3,733 kidnappings and 10,516 cases of rape were reported. This is all in three months. Women and girl children are continuously found raped and killed in a brutal manner in our communities while nothing is being done to ensure perpetrators suffer harshly for their crimes. Criminals are now even robbing police stations and the police are working with drug dealers and politicians. Our roads are in a complete state of disaster. Portals cost millions of rents due to damages. Hundreds of our people are dying on these roads. They are avoidable death. Hospitals are dilapidated and many of them are in a state of complete disaster. Municipal buildings are an embarrassment. It is as if there are no adults who work there. There is just a general decay and dilapidation of social and economic infrastructure everywhere you go. Water infrastructure is dilapidated. We lose billions of water in leaks while our people do not have clean, dependable and drinkable water and must share water with animals. There is no practical and believable plan to address the water crisis in South Africa. While the infrastructure continues to collapse, the National Treasury continues to propose and implement budget cuts with every opportunity. Many of our communities are still without water, despite numerical and superficial statistics presented on the access to water. South Africa faces a huge crisis of water provision and access. Water is important for human life and water is important for everything we do on a daily basis. We therefore take this opportunity as economic freedom fighters to resonate the voices of waterless communities, districts, municipalities, townships, informal settlements and villages. We do so because everywhere we go, our people are complaining about access to water and they, are correctly, and they correctly say that their voices are not heard and resonated in Parliament despite the fact that this institution is supposed to express the interest of our people. We are here 
to resonate the cries of the people of Umtlabo Yalingan, of Josini, Mutubatuba, and Big Five Trabisa in Mkanyakude. Do not have water despite the huge Josini Dam, which both the ANC and IFP governments are, falling, are failing to reticulate water from. We know that all the 61 wards of Mzinyati districts, Umsinga, Ngutu, Endumain, and Umvoti have a huge crisis of water, and there is no solution if those who are government in those municipalities remain in power. Much of the problems we are confronted with is because of the incapable state that has completely collapsed, especially at local government. The majority of municipalities have collapsed and cannot even cannot do even the most basic things. Many of the municipalities cannot fix sewer spillage, cannot collect refuse, cannot cut grass, cannot fix, fix potholes, and all they remain is to pay for salaries. We have young, recently graduated doctors and teachers who were funded by the very same state, but today they are told that there are no teaching jobs and there is no money to pay for doctors when they are in, when there are hospitals and clinics who do not have doctors today. Our nation is in a crisis and must be rescued as a matter of agency. As they await their results, the EFF wish all matriculants well following the 2023 examination cycle. We call on all communities to celebrate those who have done well and encourage those who may not perform, who may not perform at desired level to improve their results and never stop pursuing education. A negative outcome in metric result is not a death sentence, but an opportunity to further emphasize the importance of applying yourself when it comes to education. We call on all matriculants to pursue post-metric qualification at university, at universities of technology and TVET colleges in order to better themselves and equip themselves to make a contribution in South Africa's future. The EFF Student Command will once again embark on the Sizofunda Ngenkani campaign and ensure that across all institutions of higher learning, no student is denied access to education due to lack of aff affordability. We take this opportunity to send our condolences to the President of the EFF Student Command, Commissar Sitre Lonzi, who was befallen by a tragedy this festive season that has seen four members of his family die after a car accident, and one still in hospital in a critical condition. This tragedy that has befallen our young leader, this tragedy that has befallen our young leader of our organization, who has committed himself to the struggle of the youth requires all of us to rally behind him. And we encourage all leaders, particularly those in the Western Cape, to show him our support. As the EFF Student Command embarks on the Zofunda Ngenkani campaign, the dire state of the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NSFAS, demands a radical youth that will fight tirelessly for the doors of learning to be opened for all. As things stand, NSFAS is crippled by a 13 billion budget cut by Treasury, confirming once again that the ANC government sees no value in education. Further to this, the EFF is affirmed in our long-held view that at the center of the collapse of higher education sector is Bladen Zimande, who has now been exposed through leaked voice recordings for having secret meetings with service providers who have allegedly donated more than one million to the SACP during his tenure as the General Secretary. Nzimande has been anti-students ever since he was placed in that department for factional reasons and has established it as his personal wallet which he uses to practice patronage, patronage and enrich himself and his friends. Blends his Monday must resign and he must resign now. We as the EFF want to assure the people of South Africa that we are here to rescue South Africa from high levels of incompetency, directionlessness 
and incapability of the sitting government. The 30 years of the ANC's rule has proven beyond any doubt that the former liberation has no ideological, political, moral and technical capacity to rescue South Africa from perpetual decline and decay. We remain as the only organization that in our 10 years of existence have demonstrated through commitment to finding permanent solutions to the crisis confronting our country. As a result, we call on Sir Ramaphosa to immediately announce the election date for the 2024 national and provincial elections as there is no logical or reasonable excuse to prolong this announcement any longer. Ramaphosa must accept that his term that has been defined by failure has come to an end and give the nation a firm election date so it can prepare itself for a future that does not include him. On the 3rd and the 4th of February 2024, the Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, will hold its second voter registration weekend and the EFF encourages all unregistered South Africans to register to vote and for those who have voted before to check if they, are, they still appear on the voters' roll. The 2024 elections represent a massive opportunity for change and the upliftment of the lives of South Africans and to not re be registered to vote is tantamount to a betrayal of one's duty as a, t as a citizen. The youth must rise to the challenge and prove all those who say they are not interested in politics wrong by coming out and register to vote just like they did in the first voter registration weekend. The option to register online remains open until the proclamation of the election date is made. So voter registration is in fact open every day. All South Africans are encouraged to visit the IEC website check their voting status, and for those who are not registered, you can register to vote online. We will, on the 10th of February 2024, unveil a detailed ready to govern program, which is our manifesto for the 2024 elections. Like all our previous manifestos, our 2024 manifesto is not a document of promises, but real and realizable commitments. We do not make empty promises in the EFF. We make solid, sound, and scientifically proven and based commitments. That's who we are and that's what we represent. 